Hi learners! Welcome to Math is Fun with Sir O. Today, I will be discussing statistics. Our lesson on statistics is divided into three subtopics, namely the measures of central tendency, the measures of dispersion, and normal curve distribution. For today's lesson, we're going to familiarize ourselves with the definition of statistics and its two branches. And of course, we're going to know the measures of central tendency for the ungrouped data. Let's go to our learning outcomes. At the end of this lesson, the learners would be able to first, familiarize the definition of statistics and its branches. Second, know and learn the mean, median and mode as measures of central tendency. And lastly, compute and interpret the measures of central tendency for the ungrouped data. Now let's define statistics. Statistics is the branch of mathematics which includes collecting and analyzing numerical data in large quantities, especially for the purpose of inferring proportions in a whole from those in a representative sample. This is taken from Oxford languages. Statistics can be used to improve data quality by developing specific experimental designs and survey samples. Statistics also provides tools for prediction and forecasting. And it is applicable to a wide variety of academic disciplines, including natural and social sciences, as well as government and business. Arithmetic mean statistics. The arithmetic mean statistics involves the collection, organization, summarization, presentation, and interpretation of data. We have two branches of statistics. The first one, is descriptive statistics. The branch of statistics that involves the collection, organization, summarization, and presentation of data is called our descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics can be useful for two purposes. First, to provide basic information about variables in a data set, and number two, to highlight potential relationships between variables. The second branch of statistics is inferential statistics, the branch that interprets and draws conclusions from the data is called inferential statistics. Inferential statistics are often used to compare the differences between the treatment groups. Inferential statistics use measurements from the sample of subjects in the experiment to compare the treatment groups and make generalizations about the larger population of subjects. Any question? Now, before we go to our discussion on the measures of central tendency, I have here a riddle challenge. I'm going to read our riddle. What is the mode of the referrer that is also the median of world, but it does not have any mean? You can pause this video if you need more time to answer this riddle. Now, going back to our riddle, what is the mode of the referrer that is also the median of world, but it does not have any mean? The correct answer is the letter R. In the first statement, what is the mode of the referrer? If we are to consider the mode in the word referrer, letter R appeared the most number of times in the word refer. So letter R appeared four times. In the second statement, the median of world. Letter R is the median letter in the word world. And in our last statement, it does not have any mean. We cannot obtain any mean because there is no substantial data to solve for the mean. Any question? None. So this time, we're going to discuss the measures of central tendency for the ungrouped data. So we have mean, median, and mode. Let's start with the mean. The mean is the most commonly used 
measure of central tendency. When we speak of average, we always refer to the mean. We are using this formula to solve for the mean. That is bar x is equal to summation of x all over n, where your bar x is our mean, our summation of x is the sum of the values of our x's, and our n is the number of x's. Let's have our first example. Six friends in a biology class of 20 students received test grades of 92, 84, 65, 76, 88, and 90. Find the average of their test scores. For our solution, using our formula, bar x is equal to summation of x all over n. We're going to summate the values of our x's. So we have 92 plus 84 plus 65 plus 76 plus 88 plus 90. Then we're going to divide their sum by 6. And that is equal to 495 divided by 6. 495 divided by 6 is 82.5. The average of their test scores is 82.5. Let's go to example number 2. The ages of 5 contestants in a statistics quiz B are the following. 18, 17, 18, 19, and 18. Find their average age. For our solution, we're going to use the same formula. Bar x is equal to the summation of x all over n. So that is equal to 18 plus 17 plus 18 plus 19 plus 18. Then we're going to divide their sum by 5. That is equal to 90 divided by 5. 90 divided by 5 is equal to 18. So the average age of the contestants is 18 years old. Now let's go to median. The median is the midpoint of the data array. Before finding this value, the data must be arranged in order, from least to greatest or vice versa. The median will either be a specific value or will fall between two values. To solve for the median, we're going to know if our data set has an odd number of values or has an even number of values. We could be able to identify our median if we have an odd number of values in our data set. So for example, bar x is equal to x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub 5. So our middle number there is x sub 3. So that will be our median. Now if we have an even number of values in our data set, so we have bar x is equal to x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub 5, and x sub 6. So as you notice, we have two numbers in the middle part of our data set. To solve for the median, we're going to add the values of x sub 3 and x sub 4. Then we're going to divide them by 2. Let's go to example number 1. Seven mothers were selected and given a blood pressure check. Their blood pressures were recorded below. 135, 121, 119, 116, 130, 121, and 131. So for our solution, first we're going to arrange our data in ascending order. So this time we have 116, 119, 121, 121, 130, 131, and 135. As you notice, our data set has an odd number of values. Thus, the middlemost part in our data set is 121. And this is our median. So bar x is equal to 121. Let's go to our next example. 
eight novels were randomly selected and the numbers of pages were recorded as follows. 415, 398, 402, 400, 420, 415, 407, 425. For our solution, we're going to arrange our data in ascending order. So this time we have 398, 400, 402, 407, 415, 415, 420, 425. As you noticed, we have an even number of values in our data set. So it follows that we have 407 and 415, which can be found in the middlemost part of our data set. To solve for the median, we're going to add the two values and divide them by 2. So that is bar x is equal to 407 plus 415 divided by 2. So that is equal to 411. As you notice, our median cannot be found in our data set. Please take note if we have only an even number of values in our data set. Let's go to the last measure of central tendency, and that would be the mode. The mode is the value that occurs most often in the data set. The number, value, observation in a data set, which appears the most number of times. Let's have some examples. First, find the mode of the given data set. 15, 28, 25, 48, 22, 43, 39, 44, 43, 49, 34, 22, 33, 27, 25, 22, and 30. For our solution, we're going to arrange our data set in ascending or descending order. So whichever is comfortable for you. So this time, we're going to arrange this in ascending order. So we have 15, 22, 22, 22, 25, 25, 27, 28, 30, 33, 34, 39, 43, 43, 44, 48, and 49. As you noticed that number 22 appeared the most number of times in our data set. So it follows that the mode of our data set is 22. In the given data, number 22 appeared most number of times, and the data set is said to be unimodal. Unimodal, it is because that we have only number 22 who appeared the most number of times in our data set. Number two example, the speed of 10 sonographers in typing per minute are as follows, 121, 110, 120, 119, 112, 121, 118, 115, 107, 115. For our solution, we're going to arrange our data set in ascending or descending order. But we arrange this in ascending order. So we have 107, 110, 112, 115, 115. 118, 119, 120, 121, 121. As you notice, we have 115 and 121 appeared twice in our data set. In the given data set, it has two modes, 115 and 121. Thus, it is said to be bimodal. Example number three. Find the mode of the given set of data, 2, 5, 8, 9, 11, 4, 7, 23. Did you see any values that appear more than once? None, right? So for our solution, there is no mode in our given data set. Weighted mean. The weighted mean of the n numbers x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, until x sub n. 
with the respective assigned weights W sub 1, W sub 2, W sub 3, until W sub N. That is equal to the summation of the product of X and W all over the summation of W. Where the summation of the product of X and W is the sum of the products formed by multiplying each number by its assigned weight and the summation W is the sum of all the weights. For you to be able to understand our weighted mean, let's have an example. Many colleges use the four-point rating system for A, that is equivalent to four, for B, it is equivalent to three, for C, that is equal to two, for D, that is equal to one, and for F, equals zero. So find the grade point average of Dylan's grades in the given semester. So look at our table. So here on the first column, we have the course or the subjects of Dylan. And here on the second column, we have his grades. And we have also there the corresponding numbers on his grade. And then we have the number of units per subject. Now for our solution, so using the formula weighted mean is equal to the summation of the product of x and our w all over the summation of our w. So that is equal to 3 times 4, meaning our first subject there is English and he has a grade of B. Then the corresponding number for grade B is 3. So that is 3 times the number of units of our English subject. So that's 3 times 4. Plus, then we have 4. So that is the grade of Dylan for his history subject. Our corresponding number for A is equal to 4. So multiply to the number of units, which is 3, that is 4 times 3. Then plus, then we have 1 times 3. So for our chemistry, so Dylan got a D grade and the corresponding number for D is 1. So 1 and multiply that to the number of units of the chemistry subject and that is 3. So that's why we have 1 times 3 plus then lastly, we have 2 times 4 for our algebra. So Dylan got a grade of C, and that is equivalent to 2. So 2 times the number of units, which is 4, that is equal to 2 times 4. Then we're going to divide everything by the summation of our weights. So meaning we're going to add our units. So 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, that will give us 14. So the summation of our W there is equal to 14. So let's simplify our solution. So we have 35 divided by 14. And the weighted mean of Dylan is 2.5, meaning he can obtain a grade of B minus or C plus. That's 2.5. Now let's go to frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is a fancy name for our table. So that is a table that lists observed events and the frequency occurrence of each observed event. It is often used to organize our raw data. So we have here our example of frequency distribution. So we have number of computer per household. So these are our obtained data. So we're going to find the mean of the data. So first, we're going to construct our frequency distribution. So we have here two columns. The first column is the number of computers, and that is represented by our X. The second column is the number of households, and that is represented by our F. So we're going to determine the number of computers per household. So for zero computers, so we're going to count here the number of households who don't have any computers. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So meaning we have five households who do not have any computers. Next, one computer. So we're going to count here the number of households who has at least one computer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. So we have there 
12 number of households. Then so on and so forth. Now we have a total of 40 households because this is a 5 by 8 table. Right? Now we can now go to our solution. So using our weighted mean formula, summation of the product of x and w all over summation w. So we are going to multiply the values of our x's to the number of households. So that is 0 times 5, okay, plus 1 times 12, okay, then we have 2 times 14, plus 3 times 3, plus 4 times 2, plus 5 times 3, plus 6 times 0, and plus 7 times 1. And then the sum will be divided by 40. So let's simplify our solution. That is equal to 79 divided by 40. And that is equal to 1.975 thousands. But this is equivalent to 2. So meaning the weighted mean of the number of computers per household is equal to 2. So this time, your check your progress will be considered as your assignment. So I'm going to read our assignment. A housing division consists of 45 homes. The following frequency distribution shows the number of homes in the subdivision that are two bedroom homes, the number that are three bedroom homes, the number that are four bedroom homes, and the number that are five bedroom homes. So find the mean, median, and mode number of bedrooms for the 45 homes. Just use only the formula for the mean, region, and mode for the ungrouped data. Thank you so much for listening and watching this video. Please don't forget to like and share this to your friends and your classmates. And if you have questions, just go to the comment section below. And I hope you consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Again, it's my pleasure to create and make video on your math lessons to make your learning journey a wholesome and fun activity. By the way, this is your Sir O. Till next time, God bless and keep safe always. Goodbye!